In 1966, Ralph Pierce, a gambling boss in the Chicago outfit, began speaking, in secret, to FBI agent Bill Romer. Mostly Pierce complained about other outfit members and discussed company gossip. However, he occasionally let the bureau in on outfit operations. Pierce described Gus Alex as probably the most intelligent and personable hoodlum leader in the outfit. He said Alex was highly respected in the underworld and by legitimate contacts in the political, labor, and business worlds alike. Pierce said his closest associate in the outfit was Lake County boss Leslie Cruz. He described Cruz as an exceptionally intelligent and personable individual whose judgment was almost as good as Alex's. He said Cruz was very close to Murray Humphreys and Samuel Giancana in the past. Pierce's friendship didn't prevent him from feeding the FBI incriminating information about Cruz's whereabouts and his criminal activities. He said Cruz had assumed a greater role in managing some of Gus Alex's business affairs in the 1970s. Cruz represented Alex's gambling interests in Las Vegas and acted as a courier for the skim received by Alex and the outfit. Cruz stayed at the Stardust or Dunes Hotel when he was in town. Pierce described L.A. mob lawyer Sidney Korshek as probably the best contact organized crime has in country. Gus Alex handled all outfit contact with Korshek. Pierce said that Korshak made money for the outfit was by conspiring with labor unions to squeeze secret payments from companies he targeted in strikes. Outfit-controlled unions threatened to strike against the company unless the owners paid Korshak for labor peace. Pierce said this had been a very profitable enterprise in the past, but was turning out to be less lucrative in the 1970s. According to Pierce, Korshak was also involved in all aspects of outfit business in Las Vegas. Pierce described Iapa as a not particularly intelligent or capable hoodlum, but he has brought money into organization for decades and has never stumbled by bringing any particular heat to the organization. He implied Iapa got elevated to the top spot because Accardo had run out of better options. Pierce said Iapa oversaw all gangland murders. Peace shook up the FBI when he said that some outfit leaders were probably dealing in narcotics trafficking by financing large dope deals. He implied that Joe Iapa may have been one of the people involved and that Oipa seemed to be spending more and more time Angelo DiPito, Ernest Rocky Enfilis, and Hyman Red Larner, all three had been involved in narcotics. Pierce said that Hyman Red Larner operated gambling boats around the world with Sam Giancana, which were perfect setups for narcotics. At about the same time, another unknown informant told the FBI that Gus Alex complained to him that some people are now financing narcotics for other interests and are making good money. Alex said he wanted nothing to do with narcotics and would have presumably stopped anyone within his power from dealing in narcotics. Yet, even though Alex was third in rank in the organization, his words imply a resignation that whoever was involved with narcotics was beyond his control to discipline. Pierce alleged that union leader Ed Hanley, president of the Hotels and Restaurants Employees International Union, better known as the Motel Hotel and Bartenders Union, took orders from IAPA. Pierce told Romer that outfit member Charles English was a special friend of Sam Giancana. As a result, Giancana gave his childhood friend a special concession to operate his phonograph record company anywhere in Chicago. Pierce said that mob lawyers George Bieber and Michael Brodkin had provided legal advice to the Chicago outfit for over 40 years, but by the late 1960s, the two lawyers had had a bitter series of arguments and their law partnership was in jeopardy and that Gus Alex was spending considerable time patching up differences between the two lawyers in an effort to keep them together. Pierce said nobody liked Bieber or Brodkin but tolerated them because we need them to do certain things for us. Pierce preferred Maurice Walsh, another mob attorney. Walsh specialized in handling federal cases. Pierce said Gus Alex held his meetings in Walsh's office. Pierce said Phil Ponto was the gambling boss at the Stardust Casino in Las Vegas and got his job through Gus Alex's influence. They were childhood friends. According to Pierce, Iapa used a radio receiver to listen to the FBI's police frequency in an attempt to avoid surveillance.